you're going to be on YouTube with me, are you? He says, maybe. <laughs> Hi, I'm Weird Heather and welcome to my garden. So, yesterday I had to give my garlic bed behind me a bit of a trim. Why did I have to do that, you ask? Well, my garlic has been suffering a little bit from rust. And if you don't know what rust is, you are about to find out. Let me show you. So this is my garlic bed here, minus a good handful of leaves. And do you see those orangey spots there? That is what garlic rust is. Just that stuff there. And lucky me, it's not just been on my garlic. It also looks suspiciously like I've had a kind of rust on my black currants as well which I will come and show you. See, you can see on the leaves here where it's going all brown, like it's autumn already. Still June, people. <laughs> yeah, making a YouTube video. <laughs> see, all rusty coloured, not good. But I suppose on the plus side, I do at least have some beautiful cornflowers. So, you know, that's something. Over here in my wildflower bucket, which my hair is currently getting caught on, got my valerian looking beautiful there, but also do you remember that daisy flower in a previous video that I did not know what it was? Well, it has finally opened up and um, it is this. So I still don't know exactly what kind of plant it is, but it is at least a daisy flower and I love daisies, so that is good. Check out the bees getting their breakfast on the comfrey plant. They literally cover this thing, like most days, for most of the day, especially when it's sunny, this whole thing is covered in bees, which is kind of cool. They also quite like these chai flowers. And to be perfectly honest, I quite like these as well. They're very pretty. Mint's doing well. I only harvested that the other week and already it's like huge again. Lemon balm is doing good. It's gonna, something I'm gonna have to try actually. A combination of lemon balm and mint in a tea. I bet they would work really nicely together. And down here is my flower bed where I ended up planting a lot of the plants that I got from the nursery last week. So let's check that out. So I planted this Dahlietta here, perhaps unwisely because right behind it I have a Dahlia coming up from the other year. Got another Dahlietta here, this was that red one got my black petunia there which oh my gosh so beautiful got my black leaved dahlia there and then just over here this is another dahlia coming back that was actually my favorite last year but this one gets like huge it was like reaching the top of this table here 
so um, I'm hoping I'm gonna have to tie this one up to make sure that it doesn't just completely swamp with these that I planted like just here oh no <laughs> it's raining oh no it's raining oh well, that's always fun isn't it I guess I'll just sit here and get steadily more and more soaked um, as I take you through my garden stuff so yeah let's move on to the poppies so you can see I've got quite a few little nodding heads going on on my poppies got one there a slightly bigger one there one at the back here another one just there at the back and then we've got a few developing in the middle of leaf sets so that's pretty cool i cannot remember which varieties of poppy i planted can you remember no no you can't remember either so yeah but i trust they will be beautiful when they appear anyway which will hopefully be quite soon my herbs that I've not got around to planting yet. I'll tell you one thing that I did get around to planting though. If you just want to take a look down here for a second, that's my nursery tomato because you know, look how huge it is. But this one is one of mine that I've grown from seed. It was the the one that had the tomato sticker in, the seeds that I got from the tomato from the farm shop that nice green looking one so I'm quite pleased about that I mean obviously you can see it's tiny compared to the nursery plant right next to it but it's growing quite fast so I believe it'll catch up eventually carrot looking quite nice over there what's this forming on the top though see this is that going to be flowers that might be a flower bud you know because you can you can see one sort of developing in the middle there as well or it could just be new fronds what do i know and over here look how well my nasturtiums are doing they are a kind of variegated foliage. I forget the name of the variety, but oh my gosh, isn't that like so beautiful? Got some more over here. Uh, this was that five leaf ginseng, which does taste really nice. And over here, this thing, if I just remove this netting, is my onion. And it must have split into two flowers. And I know this because it's got one flower stalk there. And then it's got another. So it must have split into two bulbs, which is kind of cool, I guess. Poking out the back there, we've got some, uh, some more of those nasturtiums. And some of my little peas as well which are actually doing quite well. If I just take you around here. So these were my early peas and you can see they are really starting to pod up well. So these are gonna be actual pea peas that you eat for the peas inside the pod. And then these ones are the, oh, that one's doing really well. These ones are the Monge two types. There was the one with purple flowers and yellow pods, which was golden sweet. And I can't remember if I planted another Marge 2 type as well, the purple one. Um, I guess I'll just have to wait till they flower. But they were both tall varieties. And then at the back here, that's my passion flower. So you can see that's doing quite well as well. And then we had my little uh, common vetch that I rescued from the uh, from the cliffs. 
it's now making a little seed pod which jury seems to be out on whether these are actually edible some seem to think that while they're young they are some seem to think that these um, little beans or whatever that's forming in here can be eaten after boiling and changing the water a few times so I guess some experimentation is required on that one my kale in here isn't doing too great though you can see it's been nibbled nibbled away by bloody slugs and snails gosh they are the bane of my existence this season although at least my mullein here at the back is looking nice and healthy which is always a good thing so over here you will see i now have flower stalks on both of my elephant garlics which is pretty cool my sunflowers are doing well hooray getting nice and big now these will be too big really for slugs to bother them too much soon you know, my kale that I planted in here with them, also doing fantastically. This variety is called Red Monarch, and I planted some beans in the bottom for ground cover and also for nitrogen as well, because the roots of all legumes have these nodules on them that um, grow bacteria inside that produce nitrogen. So always very helpful if you're growing big, tall, leafy green things. You can see better over here. There's a few more of the beans have come up. So, what, is that one back there? Yep, one back there. One here. So these are all a dwarf variety of runner bean with various flower colours. Got some more sunflowers back there as well. So this is going to be the right pretty little sunflower corner come autumn. My osteospermum daisies are doing well as well. Gosh, look how many flowers that is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just beautiful. I can't believe they came back after the winter. That is so cool. And then I have another one over here which has come back as well but it's not opened its flower yet, so I don't know which colour this one is. Planted my patty pan uh, squash over here. So uh, that's a trailing variety. So it's been eaten a little bit, you can see, just on this leaf here, but I mean, that should theoretically be big enough now to take a little bit of damage and not, not just die. Got another one there, which is a pumpkin. That one is a Jacoby Little. And then this one, which is struggling rather more, is uh, Baby Boo. Got some little kale seedlings there. And some, <laughs> some teeny little tomatoes, bless them. Oh, my cucumelons there. I wanna wait till these get a little bit bigger before planting them anywhere because there has just been so many slugs everywhere. If I plant them like this, they will just be eaten and dead overnight. And I've got another teeny weeny kale seedling there. So a lot of my salad that's in here is actually starting to bolt and go to seed now. I mean, not all of it, but a fair bit, which I'll just show you better up close what I mean. They start to go to seed we call that bolting and obviously it's something that we don't want because a lot of the time the flavor changes and so this wouldn't necessarily taste that great after it started putting all its energy into going to seed uh, there's some obviously some more there start making flowers and stuff although they are like pretty yellow flowers so you know i'm not too mad about it some more there I mean, I've still got a lot of leaves that aren't going to seed, so I just need to keep on top of the harvesting of them, really. Garden cat over there, which is guarding my homemade fungicidal spray. It's nothing fancy, it's just bicarbonate of soda 
with a little bit of oil to help it stick to the leaves and a little bit of detergent to help emulsify that oil into the water. It's my sweeping brush there and inside that washing up bowl are some kale seedlings. So you can see I planted rather a lot. Uh, these are second generation seeds. They're seeds that I collected from my own garden a couple of years ago and I'm growing now. So I've got, I think, Nero de Toscana at the back here and then at the front. It was an F1 variety when I originally grew it, um, which was called Candy Floss. But this is now the F2 generation. So typically with F2 generations, there is a lot of variation in the seeds. It really is a mixed bag of genetics. So hopefully I'm going to get at least a few interesting kinds. But regardless of the genetics, I'm still going to get kale. It's still going to taste good. It may not look exactly as I'm hoping for, but you never know. I might get something that tastes and looks amazing. And that is the core cool thing when you start experimenting with plant genetics. It's just, you never know what you're going to get, but at the very least, you're going to get something edible. At the best case scenario, you're going to find something fantastic that only grows in your garden. And who knows, you might discover the next big thing in kale. I hope you do. You never know. Tell you what, my Jerusalem artichokes are doing well. Look at them all the way up there. Right, I feel like there's some confusion I need to clear up. This is my Jerusalem artichoke. That is a plant that's related to the sunflower family. The Latin name for it is Helianthus tuberosum. And we grow it for its edible tubers, which are very knobbly looking and quite tasty from what I've heard. This is a completely different and unrelated plant to the one I'm gonna show you over there which is called the globe artichoke. This one is the globe artichoke. It's essentially a big thistle. It grows high, like maybe two meters, kind of like a sunflower. And then you actually eat the immature flower head, which looks a little like that. It's a perennial, so as long as it doesn't get too freezing it'll just come back year after year so although the globe artichoke and the jerusalem artichoke are both called artichokes the two plants are actually not related to each other at all they just ended up being called very similar things my little carrots are doing well Give it a few months and they should be ready for munching on the last of my rainbow carrots. Bless them. So I hope you enjoyed having a look around my garden this morning with me. Thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.